Good evening and welcome to Liebird News. I'm Bo Rickson. And I'm Fiona Denock. First off tonight, this year Liebird has continued to excel at offering a broad and ever-expanding range of services even as accountabilities continue to increase with little additional resources available. Community centres are still an important asset within the community and more and more Liebird is required to deliver more services on a tighter budget. The Liebird team this year has continued to work with the community and to follow the vision of bringing the community together. One such initiative is to be part of a new like-minded network of business and community organisations that have a strong focus on community. These include Shane and Al from Donovan's Real Estate, Mel from Masters Home Improvements, Jen from the Salvation Army, Gillian from Flinders Christian College and Kylie from Rowellen Park Primary School. In addition to good business practices and continuous improvement remains a high priority for Liebird as is reviewing and maintaining policies to ensure the efficient running of the centre, Liebird continues to work towards a community business plan, providing quality programs, activities and classes for the community. With Liebird's ageing infrastructure, ongoing works within the centre has also been a necessary priority. To ensure a healthy and welcoming environment is maintained, Liebird works proactively in maintaining and upgrading where possible. One such initiative is the new solar panels installed in the building. To tell us more about it, we're going to cross to Carolyn, our hallway correspondent, for further details. Carolyn? That's right, Bo. This year, Liebird Community Centre and the Caram Downs Library received a large investment in a solar power system from Frankston City Council. This was funded under the Council's Energy and Water Efficiency Infrastructure Capital Works Program. The two massive 19 kilowatt systems were installed in May and between them generate over 50,000 kilowatts per year. This should pay for itself in around seven years. Liebird is mindful of the importance of reducing environmental impacts and supports initiatives for energy reduction and sustainability across the whole organisation. Now back to you. Thanks for that, Carolyn. And in other news, fundraising activities have become an integral part of the centre's already busy schedule to ensure vital services are maintained and subsidies provide for our community where possible. Liebird's catch reserves that have been built up over prior years are now proving vital as the centre faces decrease in Frankston City Council operational funding. This decrease in funding will impact on the centre's overall budget, which is indicating a deficit in the vicinity of 10000 for the 2014 and 15 financial year. The board and management have been and will continue to review ongoing costs and services with a view to minimising losses and aiming for another small surplus if possible. To tell us more about our finances, we're joined by Roland. Roland, thanks for joining us. Hi, Bo. Roland, let me start by asking, are the financial statements for Liebird properly drawn up for a true and a true fit and fair view of the financial position at the end of the financial year, and is it able to pay its debts as and when they become due? Yes, the accounts are pretty strong, Bo. Uh, they've been audited by the centre's independent auditor, Richard Vergona of VA Group, and he signed off on an independent audit report accordingly. What, what are the financial uh, position at the end of 30th of June 2014? The, the centre achieved a surplus this year of $900, compares to $1,200 last year. Notable that that's on a $433,000 turnover, so a very finely balanced result. Uh, that turnover is some $12,000 less than the previous year, despite increased expenses. We've been able to come up with a a very good result and retained approximately $167,000 of net assets. Very good. Is there anything else you'd like to report on with the finances for 2014? No, nothing special to report on, but I do believe we need to acknowledge yet again the wonderful job that Fiona and her team have done throughout the year and in coming up with such a fantastic result uh, under very, very difficult circumstances. And so I commend her and her team accordingly. Thanks for joining us, Roland. Thanks, Bo. To enable Liebird to continue to deliver innovative and diverse range of programs and activities, it is essential that Liebird continually look at new grants and funding opportunities. The success of our submissions is sometimes hindered by the many not-for-profit organisations like ours, all competing for the same bucket of money. For a change of pace, Simone is standing by for an update on adult education. Simone, are you there? Thanks, Fiona. Today we have delivered just over 10,000 student contact hours of accredited training, 
1,400 of funded pre-accredited training and a further 600 of fee-for-service pre-accredited training. Aside from that, we have delivered another 1,390 hours of other short course programs. Funding for these programs is never a guarantee, and proof of that was at the beginning of this year with Higher Education Skills Group required us to become an approved foundation skills provider for them to continue funding our language and literacy classes. Speaking of language and literacy, our classes had another successful year with the first time delivery of a full certificate course in initial ed general education for adults, including the numeracy component. In the past, we have only been delivering to students interested in reading, writing, communication skills. This year, with the changes to the CG curriculum, we've seen a greater focus given to digital literacy with the larger use of interactive whiteboard and the computers. And in closing, exciting news for Lyrebird was fortunate enough to have been successful with the funding submission that will see us deliver pop-up learning in our local communities. The pop-up shops have taken off in retail over the past 10 years and we want to bring this to learning. The learning activities will provide a first point of contact for our target participants and provide great marketing opportunity while testing new initiatives. This project will run over 24 months period, commencing in October 2014 and finishing in July 2016. Now back to you, Fiona. Thanks, Simone. Now for an outlook on today's climate in the children's services, we cross to Sue. The climate in children's services is looking good for 2015. We continue to look at different ways of marketing our children's services and to raise our profile of the services we provide. Rising costs and not being eligible to offer childcare rebate like the long day care centres has had an impact on our numbers for 2014. That said, through occasional childcare, we have provided more than 500 hours of vibrant and exciting activities and programmes for children aged 0 to 5 years. We have had lots of fun this year with activity, activities like farm animals exploring the human body, community awareness and lots more. As always, special occasions were celebrated like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter and Christmas. Our three-year-old playtime program is currently running three sessions a week and each child is thriving and reaching important accomplishments through fantastic programming and planning for age-appropriate individual growth and development. This year, our open house playgroup has continued with consistent numbers in, assist in attendance this year. A new session was introduced as Anglicare were unable to continue their group when funding ceased. Lybird school holiday activities continued this year with Hippity Hoppity, Extravaganza Play Day, Teddy Bear Play Day and Clowning Around Play Day. Over 100 children aged between three to seven years old attended. Our primary school age school holiday activities have once again seen over 45 children participate in a number of fun workshops, such as Amazing Kitchen Science, Easter Cooking and Megan's Dancing. And lastly, the Caram Downs Toy Library at Lyrebird continues to open for five hours sessions each week. It has an extensive range of educational toys and party packs that have been well utilised by its members during the year. Thanks, Fiona. Thanks, Sue. This just in, Lyrebird, renowned for the events it puts on every year and the flagship Christmas Community Festival, has announced the location is changing after eight years. The 2014 festival will be held in a new and bigger location at the Caram Downs Recreational Reserve on Ridge Road. This move allows a growing number of local organisations and businesses to be involved. The date for the event is Saturday the 20th of December. Finally, thanks to many of our stakeholders who support the centre, Frankston City Council, Department of Human Services, the Department of Education and Early Childhood, Adult Community Further Education and Skills Victoria and our local businesses. Well, that's all uh, for the 2014 edition of Lyrebird News. I'm Bo Rickson. And I'm Fiona Danock. Thanks for joining us.